Hey, everybody. How's it going? Math is here. It's been a while, and uh, bear with me for the sound quality. It might be a little echoey in here. Um, also, for me being gone pretty much all of February, we'll talk about that. Um, but also for, you know, not being very consistent for a little while, and I can finally a little bit talk about why. This is going to be an update video. It's going to be rambly and unfocused and mostly me uh, just kind of talking to you. Um, if you like that kind of thing, great. Uh, if you don't, well, Dean's editing it a bunch, so hopefully it's still listenable and enjoyable. First, I moved, <laughs> if you cannot tell. Um, I have been working on moving for a little while now, and it has been a uh, hell of an effort, to, to say the least, especially moving cross country. I ended up moving from Boston, Massachusetts out to Texas uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and getting out here with my cat and my office stuff took forever. I actually shipped all my office uh, stuff um, through UPS and uh, it got here mostly safely a little bit one my monitor is a little damaged but not a huge deal um, we'll see if we can get that kind of fixed or compensated for but beyond that uh, the move went well and um, you might notice a cat you've never seen before uh, Ollie's gone now but um, you might all be wondering where Maya is and that's fair um, maybe to the surprise of some of you Maya isn't my cat uh, I've lived with her for nearly 10 years. Um, I lived with the same roommate for nearly 10 years. And uh, that was their cat. Um, she lived in my office because she didn't get along with my cat, both of my other cats. Um, I only ended up taking one with me though because the other one really fell in love with my roommate and I could never pull her away from uh, my, my roommate. Um, but I took my boy with me. Uh, you got a little glimpse of him when he came next to me. You'll be seeing a lot more of him. Um, but Maya is in good hands. My roommate was a veterinarian, and even though she's terminally ill, um, she's gonna get the best care, as she has been. I love Maya very, very much, and I miss her dearly, and the past couple of weeks as I've kind of been packing and leaving have been really hard for that reason. But, I, it would be irresponsible of me to take her from not only her owner, but a owner that can take care of her in a way that I cannot. But beyond that, uh, and more positive things, you all who have been following me on Twitter have probably known that I have been talking about my mental health for a very, very, very long time. I'm a very big proponent. I'm a very, very, rather, I'm a very big advocate for mental health. And uh, the last year or so, I finally myself started seeing a therapist. It's a lot in my history. Um, I, I try to keep my, my private life pretty private. I, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, but my, there's a lot of my past that has really kind of gotten to me and, 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 and become issues. And over the course of about eight or so years, I slipped into an enormous depression and I couldn't figure out why. In part, that's actually kind of why I moved. Um, not because I'm thinking it's going to cure it all, but a big part of the reason I was depressed, I realized, was because of where I lived. A lot of the trauma that I endured and a lot of um, just kind of a rough history uh, is in that area. And being there, while wonderful when I was close to my family and I was able to talk to them, um, it was not making me happy. And out here in Texas, I have a lot, a lot more. And the cost of living is pretty damn nice. Uh, beyond that, I was super sick of fucking apartment life. I've been living in an apartment for the since before you all even saw me doing YouTube videos. No, no, since you saw me doing YouTube videos, I started doing YouTube videos in my mom's basement. Uh, and then I moved into a small apartment and then a much bigger apartment that was way too expensive. And now I'm here. And apartment life, like I said, was driving me crazy. It was really good to get my start, but I'm in my 30s now. And living in a, a space like that is driving me nuts. And now I have a house. It is a place that I'm renting and I'm not owning it. I want to own, I want to rent for about a year or two before I look at actually buying. But the move from a, an apartment to a house, a house that's over double the size with like way more rooms than I had before, I can finally be comfortable. Because a lot of this past month or two as I've been prepping for a move has been discovering myself, rediscovering myself digging myself out of the depression, learning why I was in that depression, um, and, and really, really pulling myself out of it over the course of time with medication and therapy uh, and, and the help of friends and family. Um, and then, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna really go into the details of it. I don't think that's anything that's really 
appropriate for uh, a video like this. But to give you an idea, it was it was way worse than I realized. And I only realized how bad it is after I finally was able to pull myself from it slowly. Still a lot, a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do on myself and whatnot. Um, but that enormous uh, weight has been something I've been working on for a long time. And then, like I said, Illuminati kind of took off. Um, and this past year, we were able to make money off of it. And the hardest or weirdest thing for me to, to believe is that I am now living in a house that I can now afford, live comfortably, not worry about feeding myself, and actually enjoy buying myself one or two things, um, whether they be for my work setup or something just for me to enjoy because of Chiluminati. I am living in the house that Chiluminati built. I never, ever thought that that would be the case. And here I am. This past year has been the hardest year of my life. There's been so much discovery of myself, the things that I've been held back on. The reason I'm so insecure and, and scared of, of my own of my own mind, there's a lot I have to work on. But I am finally in a place where I can heal. And I didn't realize that my apartment had become a place I couldn't for a lot of reasons, but a lot of the trauma that I endured, I endured in that apartment. And I was incredibly stuck without realizing how stuck I was. I had surrounded myself in kind of this depression nest. My office, as much as it was my sanctuary, was also the place I hid from the world. I stopped talking to my family for years. I slowly cut off all of my friends, except for the ones that I, you know, have, uh, uh, that I could talk to on the internet very easily. Um, and I slowly, slowly, slowly became less consistent with content. And a lot of that I thought was because I was tired, because I was doing too much. You know, I had too many projects and I was trying too many things. And that's partially, that's partially true. But the reality was that I was insanely depressed and my anxiety was dominating my life. And I was operating on a moment to moment kind of day, just hoping that the next few minutes would be calm enough in my mind that I could finally do work that I could finally create. And I truly had convinced myself that the reason I was so tired all the time was because I was overworking myself. And while that's a part of it, it's like 20% of it. The other part is because I neglected my mental health. And when I started to take care of it, I started getting more tired and I couldn't really figure out why. And I realized it's because I was putting in the energy to confront the things that were damaging me and bringing me down. And healing is exhausting. You know, you always think when you realize what's causing the issue or you can put some sort of lens on it or slap a name on it or put it into perspective in your head of the cloud, see the forest, you know, not, not being able to see the forest through the trees and being able to poke above the forest for a minute or poke above the trees for a minute. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Because when you see it, even if you see it and recognize it and acknowledge it and know you need to do work on it, I used to think knowing and having reasons why I'm depressed and knowing why I'm depressed would fix it because then I would have an answer, right? But I should know better by now. I don't know why I thought I'd be any different than everybody else. I know how, how it is for everybody else, but for me, because I was so knowledgeable about mental health, because I lived with it and I saw it break my mother and my grandmother and, and my family over and over again, that I would see the symptoms when they hit me, that I would figure it out. And when I knew why I was depressed, that would be all I needed and I could get out of it. But that wasn't true. And it took me, and, and, no, and to be on, I'm gonna be honest with you, a shameful amount of time for me to realize it, but I did. And then I had to realize that knowing why wasn't fucking enough. And so I began my journey and it was a long, long, long one. And it's far, far, far from over. 
that this is my new beginning. This is what I've been wanting and not allowing myself to have. You used to see three bookshelves of my collection. That's not even half of what I own. I was too nervous. I had no free space to display. I shared an apartment with somebody who uh, didn't share my passions. And so, you know, I didn't want to, outside of my office, I couldn't decorate. But now I can do that. I can change that. I can decorate my office. I can have a game room. I can have a D&D &D room. I can live the life that I want to live. And that may sound so simple for some, but for someone like me who did not realize how deep in it I was, having this is life changing. All that to say that I'm back. Give me a little time to spin up my wheels, get my engine started. I literally finished getting my office set up 10 minutes before I threw the recording button on, but I needed to talk to you guys because I miss creating content. I miss working. I'm so happy to be back. Dean got up a video while I was gone. I know he intended to do more, but the poor bastard got roped into jury duty. Um, but we're back and March is gonna be a good month. I'm, I'm curious to see where the energy I have lands, what comes forward. But the one thing I want to do more of, obviously beyond Chaluminati is Judge Mathis. I had a plan to do one more Judge Mathis before I left that apartment to say my farewell to that place, but the depression and anxiety just, just sapped it from me. Getting out of there was hard enough, but I'm here. And now in our new little, like I said, the new house of, of Chaluminati, the house that Chaluminati built. I came from my mother's basement to here, all doing this. I know, I told you it was gonna be rambly, but it's a lot, it's a lot to process. And for the first time in over, since I've started doing this, I finally, finally feel a little bit of pride. Not that I felt shame in my work, but anytime I ever felt positive feelings about the things I did, I told myself I didn't deserve it. But this feels different. I cannot fucking wait to have the energy I used to have when I created. A lot of you guys kept saying when I do videos like this that your math is you're starting to look healthy again. You start I look a lot healthier. To say goodbye, meet Oliver. This is my boy. I've had him for eight years. He is my partner in crime and I love him very much. Maya was wonderful and I love her and I, and I you know if I can go see her before she passes, I will. But he's my boy. I missed him so much. I had to actually go. I spent some time at my mom's house to say goodbye to family and uh, prep for the journey. And uh, I left Ollie at the apartment. I, I couldn't, you know, I didn't see him for like two weeks. Uh, it's so good to have him. Thank you guys. Thank you for everything. I'm eternally thrilled to be doing this again and I, i'm sorry this was so rambly but <sighs> what an exhale thanks i'll see you soon bye honey pop two bitch